to help smallholder farmers combat climate challenges, increase their yield and of course their income, ACRA together with their partners has organized a program or a challenge, an incubation program that has opened doors for a lot of farmers, agri-tech organizations, agri-processors or agribusiness to form a consortium of five to be able to develop solutions that would address the challenges facing smallholder farmers here in Ghana. So the Ghanaian farmer is here to cover and bring you assets of what happened during the launch. Of course, there were presentations from four different bandu leads and they had some interesting presentation for the participants and of course, I also had a word with one of the team lead in Accra and this is what they have to say. <laughs> Farming is a proven part out of poverty globally, but climate change is making it significantly more challenging. And so this afternoon, if you are gathered here, it's for a purpose. Dr. Richard Asari, country representative of IITA, Dr. Tepa Yoto, Icra Ghana Cluster Lead, invited guest or protocol observed. On behalf of Icra and its partners, I welcome you to this August occasion. I welcome you once again to the ICRA Accelerator Info Matchmaking event. My name is Enyona Manye Ajete. I'm a farmer by choice and an agri journalist. Good afternoon and please give yourself a round of applause for being here. So I proceed with acknowledging some few partners who are working on this project together with ICRA. The ICRA project in Ghana is led by the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture with support from Crop Research Institute of CSRI, Ghana Meteorological Agency, International Water Management Institute, Plant Protection and Regulatory Service Directorate of the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, Biotechnology and Nuclear Agriculture Institute, University of Development Studies, former line and SACOM. This afternoon we are gathered here, and I'm sure some of you know the reason for our gathering, but just to refresh our memories, I would give you a highlight of the purpose for our gathering. The purpose of this event is for ICRA to facilitate potential SME getting to know each other and coming together to form partnership to put together proposal to apply for ICRA accelerated grant. While we expect matchmaking to happen at the event, ICRA shall not be directly involved in matching SME. The matchmaking is expected to occur among SME when they know what each other enterprise has to offer and how they can come together to leverage on their unique solution to form a partnership to develop a market solution towards the scaling of ICRA's proposed bundle. So if you find yourself in table one, table two, table three, table four, please once again appreciate yourself with a round of applause for being selected to be part of this great and amazing project that is about to revolutionize our agriculture sector here in Ghana. So I'll start off the activity by inviting some, some of our bundle leads to come and give us a few messages and then we'll proceed accordingly. Now we'll start off with a welcome address by the cluster lead. So if you are here with me, with a standing ovation, shall we please welcome Mr. Ayoto? Please keep doing it, too. If not, I'll find someone to disqualify. Thank you very much. 
Uh, maybe seated, please. It's really exciting to see you guys. Thank you for coming. Um, there are reports that um, we are not on the track regarding um, the sustainable development goals. Uh, we are far behind achieving the targets, and particularly as far as we are concerned, uh, SDG number one, no poverty, number two, zero hunger, and then number 13, climate action. So there is really increasingly uh, a need to really deploy the relevant technologies at the right place in the face of climate change. So in Ghana, we are really aligned with the country priorities to make sure that we join forces and uh, achieve um, a better food security, a better resilience of our farming systems. And that cannot happen without your effort, without your contribution. So. I really want to appreciate your participation to this event on behalf of the whole team and uh, the ITA uh, country rep. I wish you a warm welcome here at our sister institute, uh, the International Water Management Institute, and really wish fruitful interactions among ourselves. Thank you for coming. Please, we can do it better. Thank you very much. So yesterday, I was, I'm a very active person on digital media. And on Twitter, there was this news that Broke and TV3 actually did an artwork. And I want to quickly read about it, which is World Bank, you know, listing some top four African countries in sub-Saharan Africa that food is very expensive. And guess who is number one? Please be my guest. Thank you very much. Ghana is number one. So <laughs> if we have to avoid that, we need to make sure we all play our role so that our farmers can increase production. And of course, if I'm increasing production, I want to also earn a higher income. If you're a farmer here, I hope you agree with me. Yes, thank you very much. So I'll we'll proceed with receiving some brief, brief presentation from our bundle leads and i'm going to start off with the smart production and soil dr patricia amankwaye boy if you're here please join me let's clap for her while she joins me thank you very much good afternoon uh, so this is the face that i've been hiding um, at the virtual meeting um, I think we've given a lot of background to our bundle. Just like she said, we are trying to address climate change issues and all the effects that it, it has on production. And with this modern age and the direction that our globe is going, we cannot do business as usual. We want to do some smart farming as well. We want to go smart with everything that we are doing, including even our production our sales, our agro-advisories, everything. That is how come you hear us saying smart a lot in ICRA. We want to go smart, be smart in everything that we are doing. So this is us, and the Smart Production in Soils Bundle is being led by the Alliance and supported by CSIR Crop Research Institute. The thematic lead is Dr. Ulitao Abera, unfortunately, is not here, and I'm standing in to do this presentation on his behalf. So we have this simplified um, uh, figure here that is showing what we want to do as part of our bundle. So if you, if you see SPNS is the, the acronym for Smart Production and Soils, here we have Again, three thematic areas that we are involved in. We are looking at improved production technologies. 
We are looking at giving agro-advisories to our farmers. We are looking at sustainable financing. And then some decision supports. Key to this is building the farmers' capacity to be able to make some of these informed decisions after receiving all of these um, technologies and bundles. Now, under the improved production technologies, we are looking at integrated soil fertility to improve our soils. We are looking at site-specific fertilizer recommendations. We know that uh, looking at our soils, there is no need to give blanket recommendation. The soils in, for instance, Kumbungu is different from the soils in Cape Coast. But most often, we do the national recommendations, and everybody seems to be applying that. We don't want to do that anymore. So we are going district by district level and doing these recommendations and then asking the farmers to apply some of these recommendations. We are talking about improved seas. We are going site-specific as well. We get most of our release varieties across the nation, but then some of them perform quite better in some areas than the others. So can we push those that perform better in those areas to those areas so that they can improve their production as well? And then we are talking about sustainable agricultural mechanization. There are two parts to this. We want to improve the soils by reducing the impact that our conventional tillage has on the soil. So now, instead of the conventional plowing and harrowing, we don't want to do that anymore. We want to be smart to conserve our soils, our soil biodiversity, and then sequester some carbon even whilst we are producing our crops. So that is how can we want to do sustainable agricultural mechanization. So there are some technologies, for example, ripping, crimping, and other tillage uh, activities that when you do, you can say that you are being smart. So we are introducing this to the farmers and then with the hope that they will adopt this. The other part of the mechanization is to um, give our farmers or introduce them to these small mechanization equipment, which we are calling enablers. For example, roller planter, in row weeders, fertilizer applicator. They are enablers, they help them to produce much better and reduce their drudgery as well. When we go to the agro advisories, this is to improve their resilience uh, and decision support. So instead of giving them just weather information, why don't you give them an impact based so that this impact based forecast is coming with what you have to expect should this kind of weather appear in your area. And that is what we want to package and send to our farmers. There are several of them there. Uh, to help them with their timing of field activities and pest and disease information dissemination as well. Now, when it comes to sustainable um, finance, we cannot do all of this. We talked about even the mechanization. There were some financial components to it. So can any of our consortia, who is a financial agency, be able to meet the financial need of this to support our farmers to adopt these technologies for their production and, in effect, increase their resilience as well. The decision support, I mentioned the capacity development and the digital apps that we want to promote to farmers. So, for instance, everything I've said here can be packaged as an agro-advisory and sent to our farmers for adoption. Now, why do we need you here? You have seen this these corners so climate smart gsi and sustainable improve adoption and livelihoods environmental sustainability that is what you are bringing in now you want we want to push all of this to be able to improve our production to improve the adoption of all of these technologies that we have listed here and then make our farm farmers very resilient in their production now, what ICRA is supporting is the technical and financial support, as well as others that we have all heard already. So we invite you all to come on board. That is our table. I'm campaigning. Please, start moving to our table. And we are here to answer any more questions that you would have. Thank you very much. I have met a couple of you, and I have also received telephone calls from a lot of you. And then a lot of you are also colleagues that we have been working on this space for, for a while. So we are here to present one of the bundles, which is Smart Seed, the market systems. 
And then you realize that in our current production systems, there are two critical demands that are basic to the production and food security. That is input, and one of them critically is seed. Seed and then fertilizer. We acknowledge these two uh, uh, things are very critical, and then they serve as a foundation in achieving food security in our part of the continent. So this bundle is helping to address one of the key components required for agriculture system, which is seed. And then providing all the enablers to make sure that the seed that is supplied is supplied in a system that is sustainable. So that is the whole concept. So the key challenges, as you all know, I don't want to bother you. We have a very stressful production environment. We have most times all our crops going rotting due to drought and other uh, stresses. You have water stress, you have nutrient stress, all affecting our production systems. So this is the challenge we want to address. But we, uh, we under, understand that you can't just address some of these challenges just by giving the input, which is here, seed to the farmer, and then expect that the farmer will produce and then go back to buy the seed again when you don't provide the enabling environment. So uh, our target is also the target of ICRA, which you all know, operating in some regions in Ghana. That is central region by way of a uh, gentle reminder. We are in central region. We are in Bulu East. We are in northern region, upper west and upper east. These are our operational regions. If you go to these regions, we have various districts that we are referring to as intervention districts. And under the district, we have selected communities we are working in. Now, in, under this, this bundle, our interest is two value chains, two commodities, that is maize and copy. So we are looking at maize as a cereal and then copy as a legumes. What are the trees of interest? The bundle is called climate smart. So the seed of interest should have some smartness. So if you talk about climate smart seed, we are not talking about GMO seed. If you talk about climate smart coffee, we are not talking about GMO seed. But we are talking about a seed with a treat that will help a farmer build resilience against climate change. So you understand we are talking about trees like drought tolerant. We are talking about trees like straka. Straga tolerant, which is one of the noxious trees as a result of climate. We, if you talk about copy, we are talking about copy varieties like dual purpose copy that will give the farmer a lot of grains and then give the farmer also fodder for livestock and soil fertility improvements. So, these are what we call climate smart seed. They are seed with special characteristics that reduce vulnerability of farmers to climate change, but not GMO seeds. Now, what are we bringing on board? So our main technology is the seed I have described, which is either maize or copy seed with those trees that I've mentioned. We have a lot of them in the market developed by the National Agricultural Research Institutions and universities. Now, beside the seed, then we want the enablers. The enablers are what we are uh, referring as the add-on technologies, like climate information service, which is a basic requirement for making farm decisions today. The determination of what type of seed to give to the farmer, the foundation information should be depend, should be, uh, is, is informed by the type of climate information that is provided. So we need climate information like onset, cessation. Hmm? This year we know when they say the rains will start, isn't it? And then we know when the rain is, is stopping. Then you look at the cropping season, the length of the season. That will help you determine what type of seed to give to the farmer. So providing climate information is very key to our bundle. And then cl providing climate smart advisories. Mm -hmm. You give advisories, what you call extension support or agronomic support. That is part of the bundle. And then we, you can't do all that when the farmer don't know what, where you send the produce to. Because we normally go with production focus. Production focus means that increased productivity. But we end there. So after the produce is achieved, where does the farmer take it to? So marketing is very important in our bundle. What are the market options available to the farmer who is able to achieve higher productivity? 
So market is important in this bundle. We need a, an option, a market option provided in the bundle. Now, obviously, finance, because you don't expect the farmer, we expect the farmer to continue to go back to buy the improved seed. So what are the financial options? When we are able to provide all this as a package in practically our proposal and demonstrate how you'll be able to achieve all this and then reach our target group, which are smallholder farmers, then that is what we are expecting as a, as a bundle. We are expecting you to provide what kind of improved seed, which is very simple. What are your financial proposal to make the system sustainable? What are your marketing strategy options? And then how are you going to provide the agro advisories? And then the extension support, agronomic support, and then provide the climate information that is very helpful in making farm decisions. This is our bundle. When you are able to do this, then you are winning. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next presentation will be on solar irrigation for women farmers. And on this note, I'm going to invite here Madam Abna Ofusu. Please let's clap for her while she joins me here. Thank you very much. I think I'm party three, so <laughs> I will present my manifesto this afternoon. So our bundle is on smart water. And basically, we have challenges that we want to address. First is that we need access to water for irrigation. And then finance, as the first two have mentioned, is also a challenge. The technologies that are appropriate for where we work is something that we also need to provide for our farmers. Our areas are in the northern sector, four of the regions, excluding um, North, uh, Savannah region. And um, access to knowledge as well. Our farmers need to grow something, but what should they grow? So they need information as well. But apart from the general challenges that we have with farmers, women have extra challenges that they need to deal with. And um, we know some of them to be related to the land. Um, in terms of income as well, there are challenges. And financial solutions tend to favor the men over the women because sometimes they don't have properties to guarantee their loans that they pick and then they also have dependency on others for information because of social reasons so women have additional challenges when it comes to assessing a lot of the things that they need for farming so we have proposed that some of the services we propose are solar technologies financial services which is extremely key because without the money we can't afford our technology and then we are looking at insurance as well um, to ensure the things that we buy and then access to input and output markets as we said we don't want to people to just produce and then they don't know where to take their produce to and if they need inputs also for <coughs> their production they need to know where to find it and then digital solutions that will help them make decisions such as weather for instance, right now, we are not sure if it's going to have the rains or not. If I'm a farmer, I'll be undecided. I'm not sure whether to plant, uh, to spray my crops, for instance, if I don't know what the weather is going to be like. So digital solutions are one of the things that we are also looking at. Um, who are we targeting? We are targeting value, um, value chains that first rain-fed crops, but then also irrigated crops. So for the rain fed, um, it's just examples like a maize, soya, but then it depends on the farmer. For the irrigated, there has to be one high value crop in the mix. So depending on the region and the crop that is a high value crop, the reason we want a high value crop is that you need to be able to pay for whatever you're buying. So at least there has to be one high value crop in the mix. And then we also want people in the regions that ICRA is already working. So that's why it is in the northern, upper east, upper west, and northeast regions for now. So if Savannah comes into the picture, it's something that we're going to alert you. But now, for now, it's the four northern regions excluding Savannah region. 
So our party also has a head office here. If you are interested in our proposal, you are allowed to come there. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm Salomo Fori from Binari. Okay. So we are campaigning for climate smart integrated pest management. Uh, the picture we see over here is, is depicting a serious pest issue that farmers are facing. Uh, I think most of us have heard about Fall Army when before. Uh, it came in Ghana around, I think, I think 2016, 2014. And ever since, it has become an endemic pest. We've, we've accepted it as part of the insect pest in our system. So what it does is it actually boils, in, uh, it perforates the, the leaves or it boils into the, the central part of the maize plant, thereby eating the growing shoot uh, and prevent the, the plant from growing further. So what it means is that we are going to be having a, a stunted growth. Your maize will not be able to, to perform very well. So at the end of the day, your yield is going to be very much reduced. And uh, with all the effort that farmers put in, we are still uh, challenged or we still face this problem across the country. Actually, the pest has spread to every corner of this country. And it is no longer uh, something that we should just uh, allow to, to devastate our crops. Uh, the same thing also applies to uh, another crop that we are also looking at is, is tomato. Uh, the tomato is also has varied uh, insect pests that is attacking it. Uh, key amount is the tuta absoluta or tomato leaf miner. Uh, as the name implies, it actually mines the leaf or it eats into the, uh, the epidemics of the leaf, creating a a hole. So what it means is that the chlorophyll or the thing that attracts sunlight for the plant to manufacture its food is going to be affected. So the plant will not be able to absorb sunlight and therefore growth is going to be affected. And this couple with other insect pests like the white fly, uh, which also transfers or transmit viruses to the plant, uh, resulting into stunted growth are issues that are of concern when it comes to tomato. So we are proposing these uh, uh, bundle solutions uh, that can be used in solving some of these uh, problems that I've mentioned. So for maize, for instance, we are, pro we are proposing that there should be seasonal forecast. Uh, we shouldn't just uh, sit behind and then not, not know exactly how this pest behave. We must go to the field and try to be ahead of the pest and predict the pest uh, situation. Also, the weeding time is very, very important to control weeds. If you don't control weeds early, it becomes a, a, a reservoir or a residence for pests to actually uh, multiply. So the way you control your, your weed is very, very important. Fertilizer application. and and timing is very, very important. The right fertilizer at the right stage of the plant will promote its healthy growth. So we need to actually look at that and uh, go according to the fertilizer application timing. And then pest alerts. As, the, as I've earlier on mentioned, uh, it is important to target the pest and be on, on the guard so that, that uh, we don't get overwhelmed by uh, this pest. We should always be ahead of the pest and then deal with it accordingly. For the harvest time, I think we all agree that if after everything you've done your production and you leave your crops on the field, if you don't harvest on time, whatever pest that you are, you are preventing from the beginning to the harvest, the other pest who also comes to attack the crop at that harvest stage. So why don't you harvest your your crop at an early time so that the pests, those other pests that are 
are not yet available, you don't expose your crops to it. So harvest time is also very, very important. So for the very smart agriculture, we are, for, we are proposing integrated soil and fertilizer management. So both mineral and organic fertilizers can be applied. Aflacid is a, a fungus, it's in the soil, and it is safe for application. It prevents uh, the, the crop from being damaged. We have bioregional or biopesticides, so uh, Bavaria, Bassiana, and all those other things, and neem, etc., are very good in the, in the management of the insect pests of the needs. So the decision supports we are proposing for new and pests for the tools or starting tools in order to uh, easily detect the, the pest. In terms of finance, if there can be some form of credit to, to these farmers, it will be very, very important for them to continue the production. I'll, I'll also do a, I'll talk briefly about the tomato, the daily for how to monitor this. The weeding time, the leather, pest, harvest time, it also apply to the base. We also need to do those ones, time, as well as uh, the mineral of any fertilizer application. For the augmentative release of spider mites, spider mite is a, it's a predator and uh, it's very, very good in control of the, let's say, for example, the tita. You can be able to uh, detect where it is and then feel on it. There's something that we need to release periodically. It, it may be in the system, but the numbers may not be great. So that's why we have to release periodically to increase the number. So that is augmentative release of spider man We also need credit there. Market is very, very important. We need a premium market uh, quality demand. For the areas or the target value chains and regions, we are looking at uh, for me, Central Bono East, then the Northern regions of Ghana, and for demand to greater cry than Upper East regions. Thank you very much for your attention. Heartful program, I must say, and I look forward to the outcome at the end of the day when we select the winner. But one would ask, what ignited this thought for ICRA, together with your partners, want to do this for farmers in Ghana? Okay, thank you for, for that question. In the last three years, ICRA has promoted a lot of innovations that are climate smart. And right from the scratch, we prioritized these innovations together with farmers because we wanted their input in really selecting what is relevant for them. We have used demonstrations in the communities. We have used radio to disseminate this information. We have used the guitar platforms. And we've realized that farmers have seen the importance of these innovations. We have been able to unlock a few access to some of the technologies that are key to these innovations for farmers. And in the last three years, we have made some gains, but we have realized that the demand for these innovations and, and the bundled solutions that would build farmers' climate resilience is a lot more than what a single project by ourselves and our own resources in terms of human resource can do. And we already see that there's a lot of private sector actors engaged in the agri-food sector in Ghana. So we decided that to be able to accelerate the gains that we have made to really build climate resilience for many farmers across Ghana, we needed to bring the private sector on board to do what they do best. Whilst we provide the technical assistance that we have guided with, through 50 years of research, but also through the last three years in terms of the, the, the project that we have run with these farmers. So the idea is that when the private sector come on board with the solutions that they already offer, and many of these solutions are already climate smart, then ACRA um, backs them with a technical assistance in really putting the solutions together such that it becomes a bundled product or a bundled solution that would build a holistic resilience for farmers 
and then the digital service providers would be able to use their platforms to reach large numbers of farmers, especially with the climate information services and associated agro-advisories. Then the private sector already have some sort of unlocking, some way of unlocking access to finance, either through procuring some of the technologies or working with financial service providers to provide some form of credit inputs to farmers. And we realized that many of the technologies require that farmers make some capital investment and the private sector does these things better. So what we decided was that if we commit resources to really solving some of the bottlenecks and challenges within a marketing approach, then the private sector can come together, put their expertise, those that are providing finance, those that have the technologies, and those that are using the guitar platforms, they come together and they can reach more numbers with the technical backing of the ECRA project. So that is the whole idea right. behind it. going to benefit all smallholder farmers across the country or the project is targeting certain specific regions or jurisdictions? So for, for now, the ECRA project is working in six regions in Ghana. So we are working in Upper East, Upper West, Northern Region, Bono East, Central Region and Greater Accra Region. So in this early phase, the emphasis is in, on, on the intervention regions that ECRA work in. But a good thing with working with the private sector is that once you develop a solution with them, they have the capacity to run with the solutions. And we know that these private sector companies are not band, bounded to just one location. So whilst for us as a project, our emphasis is on these six intervention regions, we know that they would scale our innovations once they really see that the demand is there and it's really building the climate resilience of farmers. So eventually, these proposed solutions that we are working together with this private sector, we expect them to outscale it to other regions in the country. I've heard there are some juicy prize, you know, to be won um, at the end of this whole challenge or incubation. How much are we looking at and what, what specifics are these um, grants supposed to be used for, for the benefit of everybody? Um, so for, we have four bundles. Mm -hmm. And for each of the bundled solution, the winning proposal, I mean the proposal that really gives us the, the, the courage that it's going to work and it's going to reach many farmers would get 50,000 US dollars. That's, yes, we know, that looks like a lot of money. Sure, right? <laughs> and then we are hoping that for this money, we are not um, looking at this money going into, say, the, the startup of a new company. We are not looking at that this money would go into the startup of a new farm. The main challenge that we want this money to be used to address is some of the bottlenecks that makes it difficult for the private sector to reach many farmers. So the money is supposed to go, to, go towards addressing what we call business challenges. The challenges that makes it difficult for a business to scale to more farmers. These are the things that we are hoping that the, the money would go towards. Thank you very much for talking to us. So please tell us your name and which farm you work with. Uh, my name is Eric Edu Danso and I'm the CEO of Former Dam Farms. Uh, we basically grow vegetables and then uh, we um, pro uh, produce uh, livestock as well. Mm. Yeah. What do you make of the program that has been launched today? Yeah, for the program, is, I, for me, I think personally it's a step in the right direction. Uh, over the years and then especially in the last two years, We've been experiencing uh, climate changes and mm. it has really impacted our production processes negatively. And so if there's a project like this, that will enhance our chances of uh, improving our yield mm. and increasing productivity, then I believe uh, it's something that we need to appreciate and then encourage. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for speaking to us. Hi, please tell me your name and which organization you're representing. Hi, my name is Priscilla Ofea Sari and I'm representing Wamiya Guru Limited. Okay, so as someone in the agriculture value chain, mm. what do you make of these projects that have been launched by ICRA and its partners? Um, what relevance does he have and how is he going to impact the smallholder farmer? Right, so with the ICRA program, I believe in this season of climate change, of sustainability, of technology advances, when you look at the bundles, each of them is speaking of smart, smart, smart. And so for now, the farmers are going to have an opportunity to be a part of that conversation. So it's not just going to be those of us on the other end that just know about the technological part, but the farmers are also going to 
be a part of it. So in long term, farmers are going to get rid of climatic stresses, they are going to um, be innovative, they are going to be in sustainability, the whole package. So it's going to help farmers very much. Thank you very much for speaking to us. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, tell us your name and which company you are representing. Hi, I'm Emmanuel from AgriMecab. Okay. And basically what we do is we use the black soldier fly to transform organic waste into animal feed, fertilizer okay. and energy. Okay. As someone in animal feed production, how relevant is this program to what you do? It's actually in the products that we have. The insect is able to transform organic waste into fertilizer as well. And it's this fertilizer that we want to collaborate with others to see how best we can actually help the Ghanaian farmer. Mm. So what we've learned with our fertilizer is that we know that with the use of inorganic fertilizers, you, after a consistent number of years, you actually end up damaging the soils. Mm. So we believe that with our product, you'll be able to be like re rehabilitate the soil. Mm. And we also know that we cannot do it alone. So with this, we get to collaborate with others in different aspects of the whole mm. production chain mm. or in the whole system so that whatever we do mm. on our corner can also be shared or probably the effect can be multiplied if we can partner with someone else. Okay. So what are your expectations? Because I see different value chain coming together yeah. to work on one section of the project. Mm. What are your expectations? Well, Personally, so far, my expectation is actually being met. My expectation was to meet other people who are at either upstream of where we are in the value chain or downstream. Okay. And we've met both. And we've even met those who are at the same level we are. And so we want to see how best we can put together a proposal that can help us or put us together, working together on the same problem of improving yields for the average Ghanaian farmer. All right. Thank you very much. He kept mentioning our name, the Ghanaian farmer, the Ghanaian farmer. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the other side. Bye.